Good morning. We'd like to welcome you to Hope Family Church and Outreach of Haynes Ministries. We're so glad that you could join us this morning. And uh, we're going to have communion this morning, so as we announced last week. And so if any of you missed that announcement, this is your time. You can go uh, get some crackers or bread and, and some grape juice or, or Kool-Aid, and you can join us in Holy Communion. And I'd just like to uh, share a few scriptures before uh, Pastor Steve Haynes gets up and ministers and, and um, Joshua gets up and makes announcements. And this is in, I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible today because I like the way this says, this says it because it kind of goes into more detail. And this is in 1 Corinthians 13. And it's talking about God's love in us and how important that is for it to be manifested in our lives as believers. And so starting with um, chapter 13, verse 1, it says, If I can speak in the tongues of men and even of angels, but have not love, that reasoning intentional spiritual devotion, such as inspired by God's love for us and in us, I am only a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers, that is the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, and understand all secret truths and mysteries and possess all knowledge, and if I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, God's love in me, I am nothing. A useless nobody even if I dole out all I have to the poor in providing food and if I surrender my body to be burned or in order that I may glory but have not love God's love in me I gain nothing love endures long and is patient and kind love is in is never envious nor boils over with jealousy is not boastful or vainglorious does not display itself haughtily is not conceited arrogant and inflated with pride it is not rude unmannerly and does not act unbecomingly love God's love in us does not insist on its own rights or its own way for it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it, pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for prophecy, that is the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, they will be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. That is, it will lose its value and be su superseded by truth. For our knowledge is fragmentary, incomplete, and imperfect. But when the complete and perfect total comes, the incomplete and imperfect will vanish away and become antiquated, void, and superseded. And then I want to um, skip ahead here to verse 13, and it says, And so faith, hope, love, abide. Faith, conviction, and belief respecting man's relationship to God and divine things. Hope, joyful, confident expectation of eternal salvation. Love, true affection for God and man, growing out of God's love for and in us. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So, you know, God wants us to study his word, and he wants us to apply it to our lives. And if we don't have the love of God in us, 
then we're going to have a lot of problems in this world because we need to expect the best of every person. We can't just keep thinking about the wrong done to us and we need to forgive and we need to move on and allow God's love to manifest itself in and through our lives. Uh, Joshua, did you want to come up and give some announcements? Hello, and thank you for joining us today, this morning. Um, it is our Hope Family Church service, and today we will be having communion, and we're so happy that you could come and join us with that. If you'd like to take a moment to go get maybe a cup of juice, maybe some grape juice and a bread or some a little cracker or something like that, you can join us too as we take communion this morning. We're going to have Pastor Steve come up in a bit, and he's actually going to go through that with us. So thank you again for joining us. As always, we do have our live streaming church services every Sunday at 9 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time, and we would love for you to join us. We also have our live streamed Bible studies. It's a Word and Do Season Bible study, and it's every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, and we would love for you to join us in that as well. You can always send any of your questions, your comments, or even prayer requests to us at HanesMinistries at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to help guide you in your spiritual walk as you strive to grow closer to Christ and to be more like Him. Also, we do have a prayer line that you can call and give your prayer requests to, and that's 918-893-5522. Again, that number is 918-893-5522, and we would love for you to come and join this fellowship via the internet, via the phone line. We'd love to just help you grow in any way that we can, and we are always here for you. If you have any questions about the sermons or the Bible studies in general, just feel free to email us, and we would love to get in contact with you. Maybe you're going through something in your life and you don't know where to turn to. Well, give us a rundown, a brief summary of your situation, and we will try to direct you to one of our Bible studies or to perhaps one of our sermons that we've already preached that may cover your particular circumstance. Or if we don't have anything for that, we will make one personally for you if we can't answer it adequate, adequately over the email. So thank you again for joining us today. I'm going to welcome up Pastor Steve, and I, we hope that you all have a wonderful Labor Day weekend. If you're watching this in the future, I hope that you had a wonderful Labor Day weekend. And without further ado, here's Pastor Steve. All right, amen. We're uh, going to have communion. And uh, we're going to have a great time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. How many knows that before we take communion, we need to examine ourselves? We need to examine our heart. If we have resentment, unforgiveness, or hate, or malice, or any, any such thing in our heart, we need to ask the Lord to forgive us. We don't want to take the Lord's Supper unworthily, amen. amen. Some did two thousand years ago and they and they died. They took the Lord's Supper unworthily. They didn't examine they did not examine their self, amen. And uh and I'm not saying if you take communion and you haven't examined yourself, you're gonna drop dead. Don't be afraid to take communion, amen. Uh but the Lord's Supper reminds us that we should be thankful for the free gift of God. Eternal life. That's the free gift of God, amen? You know, you hear and read and see the signs of the time and know that Jesus is getting ready to come, the rapture of the church is getting ready to happen, and it could be any day. You know, you see the trouble in the Middle East, and especially in Syria right now. And I just believe that the rapture of the church is really close and that Jesus could come any time. Amen. Uh, Paul describes the gift in the serious terms of sacrifice by Jesus. This is my body which was broken for you. The picture is one of ultimate service. He paid the price for our salvation. Paul invites us to remember that sacrifice, suffering, and service. How many knows that God wants us to remember the same thing? Amen. Son, would you uh, pay?
pass the communion elements. And uh, Josh is passing the communion elements. And uh, as he's doing that, maybe you could get a, a cracker and a and uh, some more uh, grape juice or something and just join right along with us and we have communion the first Sunday of every month and uh, I always like to exhort everybody to remember that there's power in communion amen maybe you have need of healing in your body whereas we take communion see yourself healed amen maybe you have need of finances for your checking account, your bank account. As we take communion, see yourself financially prosperous. Amen. Whatever need, whatever situation you're in, see yourself victorious. See yourself already on the other side because I believe there's power in communion. You know, one Sunday I was taking communion and I had a vision of Jesus. And we were walking hand in hand down the streets of gold. Amen. And it was a real vision. It was an extremely powerful vision. Mm -hmm. And one day I'm going to do just that. I'm going to walk hand in hand with Jesus down the streets of gold. Amen. Amen. Where my family and my loved ones and, and mm -hmm. uh, well, the free gift of eternal life. Amen. That's where we're going to go. In Matthew 26, 26 through 28, it says, While they were eating, Jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Let's eat the bread. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let's take the cup. Now, as I said, I want you to see yourself healed, <coughs> delivered, set free, already standing on the other side. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Remember when the children of Egypt, the children of Israel had left Egypt, they'd come to the Red Sea, uh, Pharaoh's army behind them, the Red Sea in front of them, you know. I believe Moses just literally saw themselves already on the other side. What did God do? He split the sea. Amen. And they crossed over on dry ground. And the whole Pharaoh army was drowned after the Israelites crossed over. Amen. So there's power. There's power in the Word of God, power in the name of Jesus. How many knows that we have... The name of Jesus, we have the Word of God, and we have uh, the blood of Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit, amen. With all that, with all those combinations, we're winners, amen. We're not losers. We need to see ourselves as winners and not losers, amen. Yeah. And uh, today's message is entitled, Two Different Lifestyles. It'll be taken from the book of Proverbs, the 11th chapter. And as I pointed out a few weeks ago, I believe uh, from Proverbs 10 to 15, the scriptures in, in these verses of scripture are parallel scriptures. They're parallel verses. Uh, they're, they contrast. Uh, one verse will tell you what happens to the good, and the other one will tell you what will happen to the bad. Amen? They just kind of contrast one another. They're like parables. What's the Greek word for parable? It was parabole, amen? Parabole. And it's just called, uh, it's just something that's called alongside to help explain what's actually happening, amen? But uh, let me pray. Father, I just come before you in the name of Jesus, and I thank you for another opportunity to share your word, God, and I just give you thanks, glory. And honor, thank you for anointing me now. Touching my lips with the words you'd have me speak. Thank you for anointing the ears to listen, Lord, and to understand. And Father, we just give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Two different lifestyles. How many knows God's going to honor the righteous? Amen. Yeah. 
but the wicked are going to be punished. God wants us to obey his word. How many knows that Jesus said uh, that when you obey my word, you, you, you love me? That's how you prove that you love me, by obeying his word. Amen? Well, that's how we prove we love God, by obeying his word. Uh, first thing he wants us to understand is, is for us to remember the Lord's Day, which is Sunday, and to remember the Lord's Day and to keep it holy, and to forsake not the gathering of ourselves together at church. Amen? God wants us to honor his holy name, his holy presence by attending church, coming together and sharing the word of God and and not only just listening to the word but taking that word out into the into the community and and just passing on what you've received amen to overflow he wants you to be filled with the word to overflowing so that you can just bubble over in the community amen that you can be a witness and we're going to teach you how to be we're going to teach you how to be in private. We're going to teach you how to be in public. God wants us to be the same in private as we are in public. Amen. Amen. He doesn't want us to just be holy in public and live like the devil in private, Amen. but he wants us to live for God in private and public. Amen. Amen. I'll be reading from the New International Version, the NIV. We have several versions. I've got several versions. I've got Bible software on my computer, on my laptop, I've got several translations of the Bible. I've got several commentaries. So, you know, I'm just going to uh, hope that I've studied enough to just let it bubble over. Amen. Yeah. And, uh, and we're going to teach from the Word of God. Yeah. But I'm in Proverbs 11. And starting with the first verse. It says, The Lord abhors dishonest scales but accurate weights are his delight man what's that referring to that's referring to business that's refers referring to business deals amen uh, in business God wants us to be honest amen uh, what if you're not a businessman what if you work for somebody well, he wants you to be the first one up from break. Amen. He doesn't want you to be talking when you need to be working. Amen. Uh, I mean, if you're working a job where you can talk and work at the same time, well, then you're blessed. <laughs> but he doesn't want you to leave your work area, walk two or three hundred feet and tell somebody about Jesus. How I many knows God wouldn't have you do that? to get you in trouble with your superiors, amen? You can do that at break time and such. But if you're a businessman, God, you to, God wants you to deal fairly, amen? Yeah. Amen, I'm serious, he wants you to deal fairly. <laughs> you know, God, he remembers the workman. He remembers how that you've treated the work people in the, in the workplace, amen? But God abhors dishonest scales. How many knows that in these days they use scales quite a bit and and these merchants would use uh wrong weights for the wrong reasons amen they they would use the wrong weights to gain more money whether they're buying or selling they had lighter weights for selling and heavier weights for buying you know they'd make more money it's like remember when jesus drove out uh he he was he was at church and and the money changers remember when he drove out the money changers well you know what they were doing they were sitting there uh, the people couldn't use regular money for the temple services they had to buy temple money and what these merchants were doing they were charging way more money for the temple money than what the temple money was worth so they were making huge profits that's why Jesus became angered and he drove out the money changers, amen? He knew it was dishonest. So God wants us to be fair. He wants us to be honest. He wants us to be honest in business, amen? Verse 2 says, When pride comes, then comes disgrace. 
but with humility comes wisdom. What the devil got kicked out of heaven because of pride, amen. He got kicked out because of pride. That's one of the things that God hates is pride. That's one of the things God hates is arrogance. But look what humility brings. It brings wisdom. What's humility? That's being humble before God. Amen? Humble before God and man. You know, no matter what position I have in life, I'm going to try my best to remain humble before God and man. Amen? Yeah. Not to think of myself uh, worth more than what I really am. Amen? No matter if I was the president of the United States, I still want to be on the same level as everybody else. Amen. Not to think of myself any higher than anybody else. In verse three, it says the integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. It says the integrity of the upright guides them. How many knows that your integrity is going to guide you? Amen. Well, how can it guide you? Remember, we've taught from the beginning, uh, especially in Proverbs chapter 1, how we talked about that the Word of God was like a gold chain around your neck and that that chain would act as a leash. Amen. And how does a leash work with the Word of God? Well, what does a leash do? It guides you and it restrains you. Amen. It'll guide you along the path that you should take, but if you start to veer off to the right or to the left, it'll restrain you, amen? Well, this just goes on to prove that's true. It says the integrity of the upright guides you. So the Word of God is going to be guiding you, amen? Uh, even when you think you ought to turn right or turn left and it stops you, well, don't think nothing of it. It's just the Word of God protecting you, amen? Just the word of God protecting you. It says in verse 4, it says, Wealth is worthless in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. Uh, I, I was reading a commentary or two in that day of wrath. They seem to refer to it as being the day of your death. That money won't buy you salvation. Money won't buy you eternity. I mean, it won't buy you eternal life with God. Amen. Yeah. Uh, you know, I once saw a story about a drug lord. Can't remember where it was. South America somewhere, I think. Or, but anyway, he had amassed six billion dollars. And, uh, and he even went as far as to build three or four churches, I think it was. But the man was trying to do evil, but buy his way into heaven at the same time, amen. The man did die. He was killed in a shootout. In a shootout. But I often think of him at, at times, you know. You know, we can't buy, we can't build churches and buy our way to heaven, amen. Yeah. Your money can't save you. Your money can't buy your way to heaven. Amen. Yeah. So, but the righteousness, your righteousness, the righteousness of God in you delivers you from death. Amen. It says in Psalm 91 that uh, with long life, God said he'd uh, show, you know, satisfy you. satisfy you and show you his salvation. Amen. In Proverbs 11, 5, it says the righteous... <laughs> of the blameless makes a straight way for them but the wicked are brought down by their own wickedness the righteousness of the upright delivers them but the unfaithful are trapped by evil desires when a wicked man dies his hope perishes all he expected from his power comes to nothing the righteous man is rescued from trouble and it comes on the wicked instead Man, let me read that again. This is Proverbs 11, 8. It says, The righteous man is rescued from trouble, and it comes on the wicked instead. Do you have somebody, maybe at work, that's been giving you a hard time? Well, fear not. 
that wickedness is going to come on their own head. Amen. So fear not. Fear not. In fact, uh, if I can find it in Psalms, uh, here's Psalms 3. It says, O oh Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But you are a shield around me, O Lord. You bestow glory on me and lift up my head. To the Lord I cry aloud, and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and sleep. I will wake again because the Lord sustains me. It says in verse 6, I will not fear the tens of thousands drawn up against me on every side. And it just goes on that the Lord is delivering him. Amen. Amen. That's how God does. Uh, listen to this in Psalms 2. Why do the nations conspire and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. The Lord laughs. The righteousness of the upright delivers them. No, I'm sorry. Uh, the righteous man is rescued from trouble and it comes on the wicked instead. If someone's giving you a hard time or, or whatever, don't worry. Fear not. God sees their end. Amen. Amen. In verse 9 of Proverbs 11, it says, With his mouth the godless destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge the righteous escape. How I many knows that gossip is a destroyer? It is a destroyer. Amen. God doesn't want us to be a gossiper. Uh, you know, I, I read this scripture and it makes me think of this one story. Uh, two men back hundreds of years ago when you used to go to town, go to market and buy chickens and, and such and bring them home and go to the market day by day and get whatever. Well, these two friends had a falling out. And after a few days, you know, it was a bad falling out, you know. Uh, you know, the one friend went throughout town bad-mouthing his other friend. And, uh, you know, that word got back to him. And anyway, after a little bit, the one friend that was doing the gossiping had a change of heart. And he wanted to ask his friend to forgive him. And and apologize and get on with their relationship. And the one friend said, okay, but you got to do a few things. First of all, you got to go to town, buy a chicken, and bring the chicken back, but on the way from town, pluck every feather on the way home. So the friend thought that was a strange request, but he did as he asked. So anyway, the next day, he said, you got to do one more thing. He said, you got to go back to town and pick up every feather that you plucked. That was an impossible task for the wind had come up that day. But the man did find maybe one or two feathers. And he came back and said, this is all I could find. And the man told his friend, he said, well, you want me to forgive you, but you got to remember that the feathers are like words. You can bring back some of them, just not all of them. Amen. So we need to be careful what we say about people. Amen. I mean, if we get mad at someone we love and badmouth them to other friends, other people, we might be able to bring back some of those words, but not all of them. Amen. So we need to be careful. Amen. Amen. In uh, verse 10, it says, When the righteous prosper, the city rejoices. When the wicked perish, there are shouts of joy. Through the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted. But by the mouth of the wicked, it is destroyed. 
A man who lacks judgment derides his neighbor, but a man of understanding holds his tongue. A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy man keeps a secret. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but many advisors make victory sure. He who puts up security for another will surely suffer, but whoever refuses to strike hands and pledge is safe. Remember we talked about that a few weeks ago, about making a pledge. Hey Amen. We shouldn't go out and make pledges or uh, co-sign for somebody. You know, they may not pay pay it back and then you're stuck with the bill. Hey Amen. Uh, now, if it's one of your children, I mean, you have to be your own own uh, judge on that. Hey Amen. Uh, if you know your children and you know they won't work or or pay back what you uh, co-sign for, well, I, I wouldn't even co-sign for a child, amen? Don't don't get me to lie. You know, co-signing is up to you, whatever you want to do. But the Bible here says, he who puts up security for another will surely suffer. And that is talking about co-signing. So, and whoever refuses to strike hands and pledge is safe. What's striking hands? Well, that is like making a handshake. You know, you'd strike hands. And that was like signing your name to a contract, amen? So whatever you do, I'd think about 20 times before you go signing a contract for somebody else, amen? Yeah. Um, I choose to go by the Word of God and not go out and just co-sign, co-sign my life away, amen? <laughs> yeah. Amen. We're in Proverbs 11 in verse 16 now. It says, a kind-hearted woman gains respect, but ruthless men gain only wealth. A kind man benefit, benefits himself, but a cruel man brings trouble on himself. The wicked man earns deceptive wages, but he who sows righteousness reaps a sure reward. The truly righteous man attains life, but he who pursues evil goes to his death. The Lord detests men of perverse heart, but it delights in those whose ways are blameless. Be sure of this. The wicked will not go unpunished. Amen. But those who are righteous will go free. The wicked will not go unpunished. Maybe they are prospering. Maybe they are seeming, seems like they get away with just everything. Bible says the wicked won't go unpunished, amen? Right. So fear not. Look at verse 22. It says, Like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman who shows no discretion. Back in those days, when the, the women would wear rings in their nose, in their noses for decoration. And they a, do nowadays too. Well, and I guess they still do today too <laughs> for adornment. But it says... A beautiful woman, no matter how beautiful she is, if she's full of sexual immorality and has no discretion, that's like trying to beautify a pig with a ring nose. A nose ring. Amen. I'm sorry. That's, trying, that's like trying to beautify a pig with a, a nose ring. Amen? It just ain't going to happen. I don't care how good looking this woman is. That's what she looks like in the eyes of God. Looks like a pig with a ring in its nose. Amen? Man, I tell you what, I don't want no part of that. Amen? It says in verse 23, The desire of the righteous ends only in good, but the hope of the wicked only in wrath. One man gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. How many's ever heard the term that you just can't outgive God? Yeah. Amen? Uh I mean, that's not in the Bible, but I mean, in essence, you know, God says, uh, Give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken, gathered, and running over will men give into your bosom. Amen. So, Susie has a story on that shaking, together, and running over. And I think it was her grandpa or somebody, maybe she can tell that story before long in a, in a time or two next time says in verse 25, a generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others 
will, ref will himself be refreshed. People curse the man who hoards grain, but blessing crowns him who is willing to sell. He who seeks good finds good will, but evil comes to him who searches for it. Whoever trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. He who brings trouble on his family will inherit only wind, and the fool will be the servant to the wise. Now what does that mean, verse 29? He who brings trouble on his family will inherit only wind. That just simply means uh, the family's going to take his name out of the wheel. Amen? And when that time comes, he's not going to inherit anything. So don't bring shame on your family. Amen? Yeah. You know, I've heard stories of how people have taken certain ones out of their will and such. Amen? It says in verse 30, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. If the righteous receive their due on earth, how much more the ungodly and the sinner? Now, what does that mean? You could say it like this. If the righteous receive their chastisement on earth, how much more the ungodly and the sinner? Amen. How many knows that God chastises those he loves? Just as we chastise our children because we love them and we want them to do things the right way. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, that's all of Proverbs 11. We're going to stop right there. And next time we come together, we'll be going over Proverbs chapter 12. And we'll just continue on with the Proverbs series. We're going to do all 31 chapters of the book of Proverbs. And we're going to, as soon as we get through it all, we're going to uh, make it all available and uh, and see what we can do there. My son Josh, he's kind of the IT guy, and we'll leave it up to him how he gets it produced and and such, and we'll make it available. And uh, I hope you've been blessed today. And as is our custom, my wife is going to come up, and she's going to lead you in a salvation prayer. Amen. And uh, take up an offering and. Uh, so anyway, here's my wife, Susan. Uh, you know, I, mean, I forgot to mention about next Sunday. Okay. Um, I just um, wanted to share here out of, I really enjoyed that words of wisdom for Pastor Steve today. And, you know, we can obtain just, you, you might think, well, I'm not a smart person. How am I going to learn wisdom? Well, read God's word. If you're a child of the king, you'll learn wisdom. And you can apply it to your life, and God will bless you. And, you know, um, here on Proverbs chapter 11, verse 21, it, it makes mention of the wicked will not go unpunished. You know, sometimes we look at things in the world today, and we say, well, that's fair, and that's not fair, and how come they're, they're getting away with murder? And... And even though this is an expression that we use sometimes for other things, we have seen people over the years, we've seen famous court cases and, and things, even the last few years and, and maybe years ago. There was one in particular years ago, and then it was really obvious to everyone that this man had had committed murder. He had, he had murdered his uh, wife or ex-wife or, or something like that and another person. And it was really obvious, but he got a really, really, really good attorney, and and he got off, and it looked like he was going scot free. And and um, I was talking to someone else about it, and they were just wringing their hands because of the injustice and how on earth could this guy get a, literally get away with murder? And I looked at him. I said, "You know what? He's not getting away with it. Nobody gets away with wicked. It may look like it, maybe in the court systems or whatever." But you know, no one gets away with it. If they don't repent of their sins, they will suffer a far more serious punishment than going to prison um, or, or whatever they could have. But anyway, as it happened a few years later, the guy ended up in prison for something else. And as far as I know, he's still there. But, 
But no one gets away with wickedness. The wicked do not get away with wickedness. And maybe God has a lot of mercy and a lot of grace and gives them space to repent, but they don't get away with it. And um, now if, you know, all of us, the Bible said, actually have sinned. All of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God's gift to man is eternal life through Christ Jesus. And I'm not, you don't have to have necessarily committed murder, but if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, uh, then you don't have that promise of eternal life and blessings that we've been talking about today for the righteous. And if you would like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, then pray this prayer with me. Father in heaven, Father in heaven thank you for sending your son Jesus, you your son, Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I believe in my heart you raised him from the dead that I can live a righteous life. Jesus, be Lord of my life. I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. Amen. You prayed you pray that prayer in faith, believing you are now a child of God and you can have a new beginning and you can live a righteous life now. You have that promise of God. Get in your Holy Bible. Start reading it. Join us Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Central Time for a Word in Due Season. We're studying the Bible in a way that anyone can understand it, whether you've been a Christian for many years or you just now got saved a few moments ago. You can learn from God's Word and be blessed through these Bible studies. And um, also, I'd like to mention, um, we, we have a service at 9 a.m. Central Time every Sunday morning. However, this next, this coming Sunday, September 8th, we will not have a service, but we would like to invite you to, to join us in the archives on one of our, our previous services that perhaps you've missed. And um, you can go to HanesMinistries.org and access that, or you can access it uh, via YouTube. And I'd like to thank you again for joining us. If you feel blessed by this, uh, our ministry, and you would like to share in the blessings of this ministry, and I'd like to invite you to prayerfully consider giving. And if you would like to give, you can make out your tax uh, deductible checks to Haynes Ministries, P.O. Box 1406, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74013. That's Haynes Ministries, P.O. Box 1406, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74013. You can also pay via PayPal at HanesMinistries.org. Thank you again for joining us. Have a wonderful week. God bless.